Right, boys, here we go. As promised, returning with the draw for the Europa League first knockout round, where Cardiff City are in the last 32 after being knocked out of the Champions League group stage. And as you can see, it's going to be a very interesting draw. There are loads of big teams heading into the last 32 of the Europa League, either being knocked out of the Champions League or being in the Europa League from the group stage onwards. So let's just get straight to it and find out who we've got. I'm hoping for an EA Gwingamp or a Krasnodar. But not in our luck, it's Man City first leg away at the Etihad Stadium. So let's find out who we've got together in the last 32. Thank fuck it's not Arsenal after last year. And there's the Ego in They've got Dynamo Kiev. And we're still waiting. And we're still waiting. And we're still waiting for Cardiff City's name to come out of the out. And there it is. Lech Poznan at the Polish side with the first leg away in Poland. You know, normally we get drawn like up here on the first draws. We took a while to come out of the out. And, uh, oh, Ajax versus Athletic. Can we do that? That would be a great tie, wouldn't it? And, uh, and there you go. So draws have been confirmed. Lech Poznan, the Polish side, away from home. Yeah, I, I think we can take them. I definitely do. I think we can get through to the round of 16, which is where we reached last year for Arsenal looks out. And for those curious, uh, the board have asked us to reach the semi-final competition as we now have this competition aim after being knocked out of the Champions League. So uh, Lech Poznan, first leg away in Poland. Yeah, I, I think we can take them. I think we can take them. Hey, what's going on, guys? And welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager series. This is episode 69. And today we're returning with two big games with our Bluebirds. I take on West Ham at home in the first leg of the Carabao Cup semi-final. Then Manchester City away at the Etihad Stadium with both teams deadlocked on 46 points. Before we play the games, though, you can't even get on off camera. And just to let you guys know as well, if you can hear some background noise today, it's most likely my washing machine you can hear. You know, most YouTubers put like a rap instrumental in the back end of, of their videos or perhaps some drum and bass or something. I've got my washing machine. Yeah, there's a reason I still haven't hit 200,000 subscribers yet after the past four years of being stuck right next to it. Anyway, uh, off camera, uh, we've played through all of December and a couple of games in January as well. And the reason not coming back to the Liverpool game today and the FA Cup third round as well is because the third round tie was against MK Dons and it was a League Two side. And due to the Carabao Cup progression and in City away in league standings right now, I thought this would be a better double header. So I thought I'd play those two games off camera and play these two games on camera. And the run of camera has been very good in Indeed, haven't lost a single game yet, and we've won all games but one of them, so what a fantastic response, oh my, for Cardiff City. And we began the round of camera the first game in December as we beat Norwich by two goals to nil in Wales. Raviotta continuing his fantastic break uh, breakthrough year for Cardiff City, scoring right before the break, making it 1-0 uh, for Sterling. Got on the end of a cross in stoppage time to wrap the points up and make it 2-0. And following that, we played the final game of the Champions League group stage, which of course was completely meaningless as we were guaranteed to finish third place and what happens in this game which is totally meaningless I feel the weakened side and we win by four goals to one isn't that typical the one game of the six which is completely meaningless and we leave it until then to put in our best display of the season so far Bloody typical, isn't it? So 4-1 the final score. Pedro Antonio scored his first card City hat-trick. And the man, I say the kid, the 19-year-old, was just on fire. He scored 14 seconds into the game. Not quite as quick as uh, Shane Long's goal uh, during the week. But uh, either way, it was a 14-second goal for Cardiff. And he scored two goals late on as well. Plus an own goal for us as Justin Clive. It's called a consolation for Bayer Leverkusen. But as we knew... Due to the loss of PSG, we were already out at this point and uh, we're into the Europa League, or as you saw at the start of the episode, we're taking Lech Poznan in the round of 32. And following that, a win away from home back in the Premier League against Brighton, uh, who went down to 10 men very early on in the game, and I thought we'd tear him apart after that, but instead, we only won the game through a deflected free kick. Jason scoring his first goal of the season in the Premier League. Uh, lucky goal, no doubt about it. Took a massive deflection off the wall and uh, wrong footed the goalkeeper. We escaped with a 1 0 victory in a pretty poor display, but following that, in midweek, we beat Spurs in the Carabao Cup quarter final by two goals to one. Feel the weekend side for the game. Was it one bit fussed about it as the board don't care either. Kane made it 1-0 six minutes in and I thought for sure we'd lose this game but instead we came from behind to win it. Scott McTominay scored his first goal of the season making it 1-1 and now with 18 minutes to go Pedro Antonio scored again. Four goals in two for Pedro Antonio as he sent us into the semi-finals where you'll see our tie is going to be against the championship side West Ham United and following that three wins in succession in the Premier League during the Christmas period. Uh, the Blackburn Rose first away he would part by three goals to nil 
score all three goals coming in the second half. The OG uh, finally scoring his first goal of the season. Had a poor season for us this year, the OG. But scored his first goal of the season, six minutes after the restart. Then Ward Prowse scored a total fluke from a free kick, making it 2 0. And then yet another fantastic delivery from Ward Prowse. This time getting the assist as Maria turned in to make it 3 0. And uh, yeah, three goals in 90 minutes in the second half. Great response after a poor first half. And then on Boxing Day, we took on Huddersfield Town away from home. And I tweeted about this yesterday. What a game it was, man. Like, literally so many things happened in this game. Harry Maguire, captain Huddersfield team for the game. We won a penalty very early on. Jason took it and he missed it. Jason missed the spot kick. The cameras panned to Maguire directly afterwards, laughing at our captain. But he wasn't laughing for long. Because just a few minutes later, Maria put us in front, made it 1-0. Then seven minutes later, the town scored a comma. Cologne goal. God knows what was going on there on the line, but he just booted the boy to the top corner. Great finish, just at the wrong end, as he went two goals up, and then deep into stoppage time, Pedro Antonio. He's been in fine form late. Uh, scored 3-0. Uh, great finish as well as he uh, wrapped up the points. Great display, and after last year's embarrassing defeat here, it was great to get revenge on Maguire in a good 3-0 win. And following that, back home uh, on the 29th of December, beat Fulham by two goals to nil. The OG getting his second goal in three, making it 1-0. Then Cesc Sinyon scored from the spot five minutes after the restart against his former team. And a good 2 0 win. And then on New Year's Day, a shocking win against the champions, Liverpool, by two goals to one, where there was another missed penalty. Uh, Alenia scored the opening goal and missed a penalty a few minutes later. He could have made it 2 0, but it was still 1 0 at that point. Liverpool punished us seven minutes after the restart. Bennett making it 1 1. First goal O'Nana had conceded, actually, uh, since November. He was been on, he was been on a brilliant run and uh, hadn't conceded a goal in the Premier League in seven games. I think it was. He was on fire. But uh, Bennett made it 1 1, and there were 20 minutes to go. Carl Zelenia shook off and shrugged off that penalty miss, scoring a wonderful goal, making it 2 1 and giving us the win. And the final game of camera was a goalless draw in the FA Cup third round away against League 2 MK Dons, where, well, I tweeted about this yesterday as well. Jason went down again with another hip injury, his third in three years. And Sterling also went down in the second half as well, sprained his ligaments, I believe. And uh, he's going to be out for a few weeks too. But Jason, I mean, you'll see on the screen right now, I, I think he's done. I think Jason is done. It pains me to say it, but I mean, he's 32 come this summer. He can't shake off these injuries. I, I think he's done. I think he's finished. So right now in the Premier League, as you can see, after a very nice run for Cardiff City, uh, we've won all of our games since November. As you can see right now, we've got the best form in the division and we've risen to fourth place in the table. Uh, again, we are locked on points with City right now in third place. I thought this would be a better game to come back for than the Liverpool game, who surprisingly, Liverpool this season are champions. Four titles in six. They're already, with 17 games to go, 16 points off the league leaders Manchester United. It's, it's been crazy seeing how poor they've been this season based on, again, how dominant they've been throughout the save so far. There's still plenty of time to go in the season, but it's still very tight indeed. Right now, us and City, six points behind United, three points behind Chelsea in second, and also just one point above Arsenal in fifth place as well. So it's been a, a crazy season so far in the Premier League. And again, the Europa League, as you saw earlier, we've got Alec Poznan in the round of 32 stage, and the FA that replay against MK Dons is coming in a week's time as well. So, I don't think there's anything else I want to show you off camera, so let's just dive straight into the first First game of today's episode is indeed the championship side West Ham here at home as we go in search of a big first leg victory to take back to London. And this is our team for the game, 4 2 3 1. Right now, in the injury report, there we go, the confirmation to Sterling. He's got an injury uh, with the ligament damage uh, out for three to six weeks. And Jason, of course, as we know, two to three months. Won't see him again until April time at the earliest, I'd say. He's done. I, I think Jason's finished already doing Gonzalez as well, coming back from injury, not fitting to start the game. He's also in the resis, and uh, Audrey Zodder and McKenny also not fit enough to start due to slide knocks as well. I tweeted about this yesterday too. The amount of injuries we've had this season is unbelievable. It's our most injury plague season of the save so far. So considering where we are in the Premier League, I think we've been doing okay. Oh! God, yeah, and one thing to show you as well. How did I forget this? One thing to show you as well. Uh, the fraudster has been given a new five-year contract. The con man is staying at Cardiff for five more years. Uh, Vincent Tan gave me a new deal, and it expires in 2030. It's a 30 grand a week pay increase as well. I'm now on 90 grand a week. And, uh, yeah, it was due to expire this summer, so Vincent Tan extends the contract, which, I, you know, <laughs> is, is the right thing, obviously. What we've done with Cardiff throughout the save has been phenomenal. And, uh, yeah, it's great to be known that we're staying until 2030 at the earliest or so. 
so you would think. So our team for the game, 4 2 3 1, our Tiki Taka style of play, and this side lineup. Henson in goal, back for a gone. Calves, Kimpembe, Holding, and Stefano, with Camaras and McTominay through the middle. Raviotta on the left, Woodburn on the right, Alenia through the middle, and Maria up top. And on the bench, Onana, Jao Carlos, Odrizola, McKenny, Warprow, Sessignon, and Pedro Antonio as well. So first game is the first leg. West Ham home. Let's get a big first leg result. Come on, you bluebirds. Alenia down the left. Plays it into Raviotta, and the kid gets going. Oh, he did everything right there, but couldn't put the finishing touch on it. He's, he's really impressed me this year, Raviotta. You said, give him some game time. I've done so, and he's, he's been very impressed with me. I'd love to see him demand the ball in this game, ask for it a lot, and show what he can do. Alenia also, tame left straight to goalkeeper. Good start, so I'd encourage the boys from the sidelines, but we need to now put the finishing touch on our moves and get ourselves a goal up. Stefano with Tomine playing 1 2, and now back to the Scottish midfielder into Camaras. Now Alenia picks it up. We now he can strike him. Oh, yes. Oh, I thought I was going over. Alenia, a length goal of the year. He's been on fire this season, Carls. 1-0 Cardiff. What a strike. Well, you can't say it wasn't coming, but I thought that was going over there. Alenia smacks one from 20 yards. And oh, what a rocket. Past the goalkeeper before he even saw it. 1-0 Cardiff. Great goal by the Spaniard. He's, he's been on fire this year. He's our second highest scorer this season. And, you know, last year he played well, but mainly at the end of the season. But in the first season for us, he was, he was brilliant. And this year he started off so well too. So 1-0 Cardiff. And can we get a second goal right before the break? Alenia's corner. Woodburn flicks on just wide of the post. We should be two or three goals up here. Stefano's throw. And Alenia is tripped. And that should be... A penalty. Now, normally when the ball rolls and it doesn't go out of play, it's always a penalty. And there you go. Penalty given. Alenia's going to take it. He missed one very recently against Liverpool. But he's played very well tonight, so I'm very confident. And he does indeed dispatch it into the bottom corner. 2-0 Cardiff City. The cocky little shit is in control out there. Cocky Carls, that could be a new nickname for him. Lovely penalty though, just strokes it into the bottom corner and doubles his goal tally and doubles his lead. You know, again, th these are the sort of players where there are certain games where they're just on fire and they can't be stopped. And it really is a confidence thing. He's dictating everything out there. And as Raviotta couldn't squeeze it in from a tight angle, he was offside and he wouldn't have counted. He's, he's just on fire out there. He can't be stopped. God, that washing machine is so loud. I'm really sorry. I've been so busy of late as Maria has picked up a knock as well. Oh, man. We're going to take him off. He's been poor out there today as well, Paleo. We just we can't keep our players fit. I'm going to take him off for security. What, what is the knock? It's a potential foot injury. This year, injury after injury after injury. And if they're not serious, little knocks here and there, they are so frustrating to have to deal with, especially when they just continuously happen week in, week out. Anyway, 2-0, 50 minutes to go. Is there a third goal? You know, if West Ham get it, then this tie... Could, could could really change. Momentum could really change. But if we get it, the tie could be over. If there is to be a third goal tonight, it'll be very big to see who gets it. Aaron puts it just over. Well, that is going to do it. It is going to be a win for Cardiff City. Another clean sheet and a very nice run of clean sheets for us as well as we comfortably brush aside the irons and get the 2-0 victory. So we'll say to the boys, a good win, boys. Well done. And here's the second leg now. I fancy just a score in London as well, and that'll mean they'll need four goals too. I wouldn't say we've got one foot in the final, but I'd, I'd say we've got a very good chance of making it now. And thankfully, Maria's injury just bruised ankle, and he should be okay for the weekend. Just look at Alenia's performances this season. Absolutely fantastic. Only in the Champions League has he not played well but he's not played poorly there but 10 goals in 20 in the Premier League as things stand we don't want to jinx it but as things stand it had his best goal scoring year for us in the Premier League hasn't picked up a single assist though which I find quite concerning but averaging a 7.36 he's just been on fire this year Carlos and I, I think in terms of like smart business we've done throughout the save this is one of the smartest pieces of business 25 million became 30 million after the, uh, the, the league games he played for us but 30 million pounds in total, 95 grand a week, expires in two, two and a half years. And he's put in great shifts throughout every single season for us. Okay, so moving into the second and final game of today's episode is indeed again a big battle for the top four here. City away at the Etihad Stadium and heading into the game. We're going to make a tactical change for it. Played a 4 2 2 2, no, 4 4 2 diamond arrow Gigan press system. Uh, we played against Liverpool actually last week and uh, managed to get the win against them with. So I, I like confusing our opponents. They don't know what system we're playing 4 2 3 1 or 4 4 2 diamond arrow. It throws them off a little bit. And uh, this 
to be our lineup for the game. We've got Onana in goal, a back for a Sessignon, Kimpembe, Jordi, and Odrizola at back for the midfield. Quabi and Camarasa, Wall, Prowse, McKenney, and Gonzalez as well. Up top, though, Woodburn and Pedro Antonio because Maria just not fit enough to start the game. Not really fit enough to be on the bench, really. I'm mean, not going to bring him on 77%, but I'll put him on there anyway. And uh, on the bench, Henderson holding on Cowers, McTominay, Alenia, and Raviota joining Paleo as well. Second and final game, it's City away. I think our long unbeaten run will probably come to an end here, but let's find out. Come on, you bluebirds. They keep it calm in the dressing room and say, come on, lads, show me what you can do. Show me what you can do to keep our run going out there. And show me, as I have faith in you, which never lets you down. You know, one thing I, I would like to see and change in, in next year's FM is, uh, you know, these these in the individual team talks are, are, are just as effective in certain situations as this. Because calm is always the best way to talk to your players individually. If you talk to them assertively, it always does absolutely nothing. For some reason, I don't know why. And I'd like to see that change in, in future versions of FM. Because again, as I said before, to me, as, as you guys know, team talks, I, I love them so much. I think they really do play a part in, in football. Psychological parts of the game, they're my favourite parts. So always saying the same thing just gets a bit repetitive, really. And I'd like to see a bit of a change. Anyway, first highlight like coming, four minutes in. Order is Zola down the right-hand side. He's going to try and cross. And Pedro Antonio is there. Heads just over though, still 0-0. He's really coming into his own in this little run of form. I'm liking her. Jao Felix for City. Tackled by Jordi, but straight to Bernardo Silva. And now it's Misses the interception. Sane is through. And Onana makes a brilliant save on a 1-1. You know, he has been fantastic in this run here. He started the season off very poorly. I'll be the first to admit it. But he's made some big saves in this run and string of consecutive clean sheets. He did lose that against Liverpool, but he's still been very good. And that was a brilliant save there on a 1-1. -on -one. Still goalless, but for how long? Diego Delot crossing. Sane's header. Oh, squeezed it into the bottom corner and City have the lead. The defenders are convinced it wasn't a goal. It's a VAR but I'm sure that's going to stand. Let's see what's wrong with that one. No, it stands. I can't see what they're complaining about really. It certainly was an offside. Diego Lotz cross. Sane's header into the bottom corner. No chance for Onana. 1-0 City. The German with the goal. New contract. Same problems. Just can't win the big games particularly away from home. 1-0 at half time. And I'm going to say to the boys, I'm actually, I'm actually going to say to the boys here and get assertive in my half time team talk. I expect to see a much better showing from you in the second half because that was not good enough. Didn't create a single chance. I know we're playing more of a counter style of play in this one and not a tiki taka style of play, but I expect to see at least one chance getting created in the second half. We'll begin. No change to our tactics though. Still down by a goal. We play a very high pressing system in, in this tactical layout and I like that. When we get the ball back, we do play the ball forward quickly to get some quick chances, but today that just hasn't happened. And I guess part of that is because City just haven't given the ball away. 83% pass completion ratio. And they're knocking the ball around right now. And we're chasing shadows. Bernardo still finds Diogo Delot down the right-hand side. In goes the cross. Sane's there again. And Andrea Zola is beaten for the second time. As is Andre Onana. The Germans 13th of the year. Two coming today. 2-0. Game seems done already. Nice little 1-2 there between Diogo Delot and Bernardo Silva. Cross to the middle. And Andre Zola, just he just switched off there. He just switched off for a second. And you can't do that against a pacey player like Leroy Sane. Because a blink of the eye and, and he's past you. 2-0 City, game, game's over. Oh, now Gonzalez picks up a ball groin. What, what is it about this season and these injuries? I swear, every other game, someone goes down. If it's not a serious injury, it's just a little knock. But it's still so bloody annoying. I don't know what it's going to take for us to be in a proper title race. I mean, last season, we were the closest team to Liverpool. But let's be honest here. We were never actually, as Sane goes for the hat-trick, but it's the freak into the wall. Last season, we were the closest team to City. But let's be honest, we, we were never really in a title race. As There's a VAR and a penalty as well. And Sane can now get the match ball here from 12 yards. We were never in a proper title race. I don't know what it's going to take for us to become a title contention team. But I don't think it's going to happen for a while. We just don't have the quality. When we take on a big team away from home, we expect to lose. Onana makes the save from the spot kick at least. He has had a really good season to be fair this year, Onana. Not, not quite as good as last year where he was on fire, but not too bad. And uh, I guess at least we prevent Sane from getting a match ball. That's the only saving grace to the game. Two to the final score. I'll say to the boys, I'm not happy with performance out there because we, we didn't play well. It's not that we lost the game. We didn't play well in that game at all. And um, City now go three points clear of us as Gonzalez gets a three to four day injury as well. And there's, there's a long way to go in the season. You know, there's a plenty of time remaining. We're still in the top four. We're 16 games to go. 
I, I think that United, City and Chelsea, they'll be fine. I know it's still very close in the point gap, but I think they will be fine. The only team that's going to catch us right now, you would suggest, is Arsenal. Liverpool are 10 points behind us. They've got a game in hand, though, but Spurs are way off the pace right now. I don't think Aston Villa will keep pace to remain the season. I think it's really going to be, going to be between us and Arsenal for who makes fourth place come the end of the season. Even 16 games to go, I still believe that's definitely what's going to be. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But that will end today's episode of the Football Manager series, guys. So a big thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy today's episode, please drop a like. As like, so of course, very much appreciated. Uh, much love to you. all have a fantastic day. And what we'll do is we'll return with that Europa League first knockout round tie against Lech Poznan. Uh, both ties here will come in the middle of February. And I think if we make it through the FA Cup fourth round, if we make it through the third round replay, which we should do, then there'll be a fifth round tie here. But I'm not sure. But you'll see at least one of the ties, if not both of them, in the next episode. Have a great day, guys. Much love to you all. And I will see you for the next episode very soon. Bye now.